Hi guys, we're solving this bio paper today. This is 9700, paper 1 2, May June 2022. If you like the videos, remember to subscribe to the channel, it would help me a lot. <coughs> I plan to do paper 1 3 after this as soon as I can before your exam on the 16th, alright? Anyway, let's take a look at the threshold before we begin. So paper 1-2 was slightly harder than paper 1-1 one, one, according to the threshold. For paper 1-2, the A was at 27, B was at 23, C was at 19. 27, 23, and 19. What about D and E? So D was at 16, E was at 13. So yeah, clearly, compared to the other variants, uh, you can see that the mark for A was very low, 3 to 4 marks lower than the other variants. So yeah, it was a difficult paper, so let's see how it goes, alright? <clears throat> let's begin. Starting with question number 1. Honestly, I can't do this uh, using my PC because we need to print this, all right? So, <clears throat> it's like this. You know that the formula is MIA, right? M is equal to I by A. Magnification equals to image by actual length. So, I'm going to go reverse. I know the mark scheme answer is C. Okay? So, let's see. This is how you're going to do it. Magnification is 360. Wait up. To 10 power minus 6. Alright. So, approximately, the, the maximum diameter, right? So, you guys need to take this length. This maximum one. So when you measure this with a scale, if you have this printed paper, it should measure about 5 centimeters. So 5 centimeters with your scale is around, uh, it's basically 5.0 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters, right, divided by actual. So actual is 5.0 into 10 to the power minus 2 divided by 360. Which is... 1.39 into 10 power minus 4 meters into 10 power 6 is basically 138.9 or basically 140 micrometer. That's how you're going to get C. Okay? That's how you do it. Next. A specimen is observed twice with a microscope. Firstly, using green light with a wavelength of 510 and then using red light with a wavelength of 650 nanometers. What happens to the magnification and resolution when using red light compared to green light? So basically, guys, red light has greater wavelength. So the smaller the wavelength, the greater the resolution. Because according to the definition, resolution is half the <coughs> wavelength of light used. So here it's not that much. It's actually 325 using red light. While for green light, it's basically 255. Okay, so that's uh, smaller wavelength means greater resolution. Red light and green light. You made me think about Squid Game. So basically, when we use red light, our resolution decreases. That is why our answer is automatically C. There is no other option. And magnification doesn't really change because uh, we don't really change the objective lens, right? Or the eyepiece. Four students were asked to match the function with the appearance of some cell structures in an animal cell. The functions were listed by number. Oh, this is quite similar to variant 1-1. One, one. Synthesis of lipids. This is basically smooth ER. Synthesis of polypeptides. This is basically rough ER or the ribosome, essentially. Poresis of mitotic spindle. Central. We also had this in a variant uh, one one the one I just did recently so guys if you have other paper requests please feel free to comment below 
I try to reply to the comments as much as possible. I don't tend to do older years, you see. Like, I want to finish the recent years before going to the previous ones. Uh, I'll try to listen to your requests, though. But I have the I have the complete 2021 series solved, so you could see those videos. And I'm trying to finish 2022 before your exam. So hoping for the best. Anyway, so which one matched the numbered functions with the appearance of the cell structure? So centrioles, it's a non-membranous cylindrical structure okay that's y basically so one has to be y guys now synthesis of polypeptides that's mainly the ribosome honestly so the ribosome is also a you know the ribosome is also a non-membranous structure and uh, it is spherical in nature that is why i'm gonna go with c because this is the centriole this is the ribosome so we we got that and the last one synthesis of lipids it's basically membranes with uh, surround and enclosed inner cavity this is the smooth ER so C makes sense this is the nuclear membrane and membrane bound sac this is the Golgi body by the way guys I'm actually in med school so bio is my main subject I also got a uh, country highest in A2 biology back in the day. I had a score of 95 in A2 and 93 in S. Uh, but yeah, I tend to make more physics and chemistry videos, mainly because they get more reach. It's like bio videos get less reach, and I guess the percentage of people with bio is quite less compared to physics and chemistry, it seems. Uh, but if these videos do get enough views, I'm going to try to make more bio videos, including paper 2 and paper 4 for the future, right? I also plan to do more math videos in the future as well, hopefully. Also, I'm going to be done with med school in 1.5 years. Then I plan to move to the UK, hopefully. <clears throat> Moving on, number 4. What is found in chloroplasts and mitochondria? Basically, they are prokaryotes so they contain 70 s ribosomes as well as circular dna which feature is correct for all known viruses basically guys uh, they might have dna or rna this is very similar to variant 1 1 actually uh, they have capsids made up of lipid and protein this lipid part is wrong it should be protein only a is wrong uh, outer envelope of phospholipid this is wrong yeah they are non cellular 5 is d Please, uh, you know, when doing years, I would suggest just do the three variants simultaneously. Do you guys understand? Because then you're going to see the resemblance between the papers and your concept will be more clear since you'll find out all the variations that Cam Cambridge can give you. A bio paper one tends to be a bit difficult, but you'll get the hang of it over time. Hopefully you guys have enough time to improve. Four extracts from different plant materials were made and tested with Bandic solution. The extracts were boiled with bending solution for 240 seconds and the final color was recorded. Which sequence of plant extracts represents an increasing quantity of reducing sugar? Okay, so red is the highest. So basically one should be at the end, so we're going to go with D. You don't need to look at the other options. <coughs> this is how you uh, do MCQs faster, by the way. This is what I did back in the day. But you can still check. Blue is the least color, so it will start from 3. So 3 is the first one. So it goes from blue, okay, to green, to yellow, to red. This is the order. Which properties, which are properties that are dependent on hydrogen bonds? Cellulose, this is correct. Water, this is also true. Hemoglobin is a protein. So yes, this is also true. 7 is A. 8, which statement is correct? This is also similar to variant 1 1. Cellulose, glycogen, and amylopectin are all polymers. Um, yes, I agree. These are all polysaccharides. Right? Basically, amylopectin and amylose make up starch, but it's a polysaccharide itself. They are polymers. Cellulose is made up of uh, beta, beta glucose, and the others are made up of alpha glucose. Okay? So, why are the other ones wrong if you're wondering? Starch is not a monomer. 
sucrose is not this is not a polysaccharide ribose is just a monosaccharide come on so it's wrong okay nine the diagram shows two amino acids now the hydrogen atoms are numbered one to six which two numbered hydrogen atoms could contribute to the production of a molecule of water when a peptide bond forms between the two amino acids essentially a peptide bond forms between the carboxyl end of one amino acid and the amine group of another one or basically here it can either be it can also be this let me do the color coding uh, six can bind with one so it's either three four or one six three four or one six uh, wait what Three, four, oh yeah, one, six, yeah. So it's basically B. My brain just froze for a second. Ten. A student wrote four statements about water. Water has a high specific heat capacity which maintains the temperature of water within cells. <laughs> Mammals rely on water having a relatively low latent heat of vaporization. This is wrong. Water has a high latent heat of vaporization. Okay, so the second statement needs to be wrong. Next, when a negatively charged ion is added to water, the del plus charge on the hydrogen atom is attracted to the ion. Cool. This is basically the chemistry. By the way, I don't know why Cambridge makes uh, these routines. They're actually uh, really bad. Like, the paper ones are like one... You don't have gaps between paper ones, right? It's basically 15, 16, 17 in zone 4 as far as I know. It's really messed up. Anyway... three is fine one is also fine by the way because water does have a high specific heat capacity which maintains the temperature of water within cells when surrounded by water non-polar molecules tend to be pushed apart from one another so one and three are correct for a and b both now the deciding factor is actually number four when surrounded by water suppose we have water non-polar molecules tend to be pushed apart from no 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 Basically, when you have water surrounding you, the non-polar molecules, basically think about tails, phospholipid tails. They are not pushed away from each other, right? In fact, what happens is, they are pushed towards each other. Do you get it? So, in fact, it's not away, not apart, but rather to, towards. So, B is uh, correct, since 4 is, in fact, wrong. Okay, one fourth done. Moving on to 11. Typical enzymes are large globular proteins with a specific tertiary shape. Which molecular interactions are directly involved in maintaining the tertiary shape? Okay, so the tertiary structure contains three types of bonds hydrogen bonds, disulfide bridges, hydrophobic interactions, and ionic interactions. The fourth one is missing here, but here all three are correct, so I'm going to go with 11A. 12. Which statement about the Michaelis Menten constant is correct for an enzyme with a low affinity? Basically, having a low affinity means, remember, the lower the value of Michaelis Menten constant, it is the substrate concentration at which uh, its half corresponds to half the Vmax. So the lower the, lower the Michaelis Menten constant, the higher the affinity. So since there is low affinity, uh, the value of Michaelis Menten constant will be high. Okay? And um, basically, this means that Vmax will be reached at a high substrate concentration so it isn't that efficient or the affinity isn't that high so basically i'm going to show you uh, an example it's basically like this suppose if this is vmax half vmax is here but on the other hand an enzyme like this check this Isn't the, the pink came over here much lower than that? So we need a high substrate concentration to reach Vmax, get it? So it's basically low affinity means you need high substrate concentration and the value of Km is high. Affinity is actually proportion is inversely proportional to the value of Km. The lower the value of Km, the higher the affinity. 13. Long chain saturated fatty acids change from soil to liquid at higher temperatures compared with short chain unsaturated 
which fatty acids would be more likely to form triglycerides in mammals that live in cold climates? Okay, so we want to form triglycerides. So what do we need to analyze here actually? Um, let's try to figure this out. Which fatty acids would be more likely to form triglycerides in mammals that live in cold climates? So triglyceride is a combination of three fatty acids and glycerol, essentially. So since it lives in cold climates, it needs the ability to turn from solid to liquid, or else it can't form a triglyceride, triglyceride basically. So if we had long-chain saturated fatty acids, they wouldn't turn to liquid since the temperature would be too cold. That is exactly why we need short chain unsaturated fatty acids in the cold climate. Okay, that's why the answer is D. 13 is D. So in warmer climates, like in deserts, typically uh, the animals would have long chain saturated fatty acids, okay? Due to the ability to, you know, turn from solid to liquid. <coughs> And think about it, if in a hot climate an animal had short chain uns uh, unsaturated fatty acids in hot climate, all of them would literally uh, melt. They would always be in a liquid state. So in a hot climate, long chain and saturated fatty acids would be fine. But in uh, at low temperatures, short chain and unsaturated fatty acids are better. Interesting question. I still think I could analyze this better. If I do get a better uh, explanation, I'll mention this in the comments. Or please feel free to do so if you could analyze it better. Basically, to for fatty acids to form triglycerides, they need to react with, um, you know, a glycerol to make the ester bond. Okay, to make the ester bond. So for that, yeah, it does need to be in a liquid state. It does need to be in a liquid state. So if it was a long chain saturated fatty acid, it would remain solid and it might not be able to react with the glycerol to make um, the ester bond. Okay, that's why we went with this. When animal cells are cultured, salt solution is added to keep the cells alive. What is the purpose of this salt solution? Honestly, uh, we want to make it isosmotic so that excess water does not leave the cell or excess water does not enter the cell and cause lysis. So honestly, it's just to prevent the net movement of water into or out of the cells. Basically, you can never prevent diffusion. It will always keep on happening. It's just that the net movement will remain the same. It's called an isoosmotic solution, okay? Isotonic, not hyper or hypotonic. The following are all processes that allow movement into cells, okay? Which processes require ATP? This requires ATP, this requires ATP. Okay, one and two. Facilitated diffusion is a passive process, but it requires a carrier. Which features are required to allow for efficient diffusion? Large surface area, true. Short diffusion pathway, true. Constant diffusion gradient, of course, answer is A. Remember, we need a large surface area to volume ratio. We need high temperature. We need a short diffusion pathway. The thinner it is, like alveoli, right? The easier it is to diffuse. And yeah, we need a constant diffusion gradient, okay? What is the role of mitosis? 
uh, growth of organisms, repair of cells, production of genetically different cells, replacement of cancerous tissue. Hmm. This is mainly from the course book, chapter 5. So honestly, um, it should be genetically identical. This is not really, uh, this is not really a role, okay, replacement of cancerous tissue. Yeah, the answer is uh, growth. It's required for asexual reproduction growth. I can show you, actually. I can show you. Wait up. Here you go. Chapter 5. Do I have it here? I don't think so. Wait. Yeah. Growth, replacement of damaged cells or dead cells, and repair of tissues by cell replacement. But you guys need to understand that repair can also be done by production of proteins. Asexual reproduction and anything else? No, these three mainly these three and also in immune response all right so may remember these three and everything else should be fine logically by the way guys if you're just looking at bio videos i have chemistry and physics solved as well so if you want to check those out i'm going to link the card above so just check that out okay it's going to be linked up here <clears throat> like I, I've seen a lot of my students reply in the comment section that they don't even they think this channel is for bio only or something but there are math, physics, and chemistry videos if you need those, alright? Anyway, uh, repair of cells by replacement would have been a better option. But there is no replacement. And it should be production of genetically identical cells. So A is fine, okay? 18. Telomeres prevent the loss of genes from the ends of chromosomes during DNA replication. But they become shorter each time they are copied. In cancer cells and stem cells, the telomeres remain the same length. Basically, telomerase prevents the shortening. Which statement is correct for all human cells? If telomeres become too short, a cell may stop dividing. This is 100% fine. Basically, the shortening of telomeres causes aging. And that prevents the mitosis of cells. And that causes death over time. Adding telomeres could increase the rate of aging. Wrong. It would be decreased. Telomeres are repaired by the enzyme telomerase. Telomeres prevent all damages occurring to DNA molecules. This is wrong. Mutations can still occur, guys. The nucleus of a mouse body cell in G1 phase of the cell cycle has 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 12 grams of DNA. By the way, uh, uh, let me know if you're fine with the pacing of the video. If you want slower explanations, I'll slow down next time. The nucleus of a mouse body cell in G1 phase of the cell cycle has 1.2 into 10 power minus 12 grams of DNA. What will be the mass of DNA in the nucleus of the cell at the end of its phase and at the end of the G2 phase? Basically, in the G1 phase, synthesis has not occurred. In the S phase, synthesis will occur. And basically, DNA will become double of its initial value. And at the end of G2, honestly, it should remain the same. Because cytokinesis has not occurred yet. So it will be double, which is 2.4 into 10 power minus 12, and it will persist. 20. What occurs during prophase? The nucleolus disappears. I agree. Fragmentation of the nuclear envelope. I agree as well. Stained chromosomes become visible. True. Although it is the most visible at metaphase. Centrals replicate. This is wrong. This actually happens before prophase begins. Check this. Check this. Wait up. Um, here you go. So the centrals, centrosomes or centrals have already been replicated during the S phase of the cell cycle. Clear? Great. So 4 is wrong. Then it should be B. We're done with half. Which statement describes the structure of ATP? So ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Okay. Adenosine triphosphate. What is ATP? It is mainly an RNA molecule. Okay. Because there's it's a rib it's rival sugar basically. Adenosine. If you guys want to see the structure, because it's not deoxyribose, it's actually just um ribose. Wait up. We have adenine, a ribose sugar, not deoxyribose. Adenine plus ribose, this is adenosine. And if you add three phosphate groups, you're going to get adenosine triphosphate. Great. So, so an RNA nucleotide already contains one phosphate. Okay, so this is the base ribose. 
So if you this is the RNA nucleotide. Now if you add two more phosphates, you're gonna get the ATP molecule. So 21 is in fact C. It should not be three extra. Revampicin, great guys. So this we use this drug to treat tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is not really common um in the West. It's much more common in Bangladesh, where I'm from and in Southeast Asia. So we mainly use four drugs to treat tuberculosis, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, lithambutal, and rifampicin. It's a fixed dose regiment. So rifampicin is an antibiotic used to treat tuberculosis. It works by inhibiting RNA polymerase in the bacteria. Uh, basically, I have to remember this. So the way is R for R, rifampicin X on RNA polymers. RNA polymers is actually in charge of transcription or mRNA production. So which processes are directly inhibited by this antibiotic? Basically, DNA replication is not inhibited because, because guys, that's DNA polymers is responsible for that. It actually inhibits the enzyme synthesis because enzyme is a protein. So this cannot produce the mRNA, so the enzyme cannot be produced. Okay, so two is correct. ATP synthesis. Honestly, ATP synthesis does not depend on the on protein production because in adenosine triphosphate we have phosphates, bases, and ribose. That's uh, monosaccharide, so we don't really need protein. So three is wrong. It's actually only two. So twenty-two D. Twenty-three. The table shows the DNA triplet codes for some amino acids. The base sequence of the on the template DNA strand coding for a part of the polypeptide is shown. Two mutations occur in the sequence during DNA replication. Which mutated template DNA strand would result in a shorter polypeptide? So we basically need a stop codon, guys. We need ATC. ATC, okay? Okay, let's look for it. So it was CCA, ACG. This is the DNA in this sequence, okay. All right. So here we have ATC, right? Is that it? Is that the MCQ? Like I was looking for a harder thing. Basically, we needed to identify the stop codon. That's it. This is literally nothing else. So there will be premature termination of the protein chain. This won't be uh, trans. Uh, this won't be transcribed. Okay. Or this won't be translated. That section. Some of the uh, features uh, present in transport tissues are listed. I honestly hate chapter seven. Uh, it's a really lame chapter. Some of the features present in transport tissues are listed. Which features are present in xylem vessels? Okay, great. So xylem is actually lignified. And xylem has spits. But it, since it's dead, it has no cytoplasm, it has no mitochondria, and it has no plasmodesmata. So it should be 1 and 4 only. Okay? 24 is C. 25. Really important question and common question, guys. You need to be a master at this, okay? So we have a leaf, stem, root. So guys, remember, for the leaf, for the leaf in the midrib, the, the one pointing upwards, okay? Basically, we need to identify xylem and phloem. We need to identify xylem and phloem. So in the leaf, the one pointing upwards is xylem, and this one is phloem. Okay, the one in the upper section is xylem, the one in the lower section is actually phloem. Next. In the root, the xylem is actually the one inside. So 4 is xylem, and the one pointing outside is the phloem. And the root is the easiest to remember, honestly. This uh, star-shaped region, okay? This is your xylem, and this part is the phloem. So, according to my analysis, 
Yeah, it should honestly be B, I'm guessing, because 1, 4, 6, okay? So you need to remember this. Don't forget this. You'll be asked to draw plan diagrams in practicals. I think you've already, you're already done with practicals, I'm assuming, right? Okay, 26. Which molecules form hydrogen bonds with water during transpir uh, transpiration? Okay, cellulose in the xylem wall. Yes, um, this is true. Seabrain in the xylem wall. Other water molecules in the xylem. So basically, the xylem, the cellulose in xylem, and the H2 in the xylem form water, form hydrogen bonds. But two is wrong. This is actually present in the endodermis, you know, the Caspian strip. So it's one and three only. 26 is C. 27. Some plant species can take up heavy metal contaminants that are dissolved in soil water and then transport them within the plant. Within plant cells, the heavy metals accumulate mainly in the vacuole. Which suggestions about the transport and accumulation of heavy metals are valid? After initial entry into the root, some of the heavy metals can pass through the tonoplast to be stored in the vacuole of cells in the cortex. I agree with this honestly. I do agree with this because they'll be stored in the vacuum. The tonoplast is basically the membrane of the vacuum. The heavy metals take an apoplast. Okay, there are two pathways apoplast and simplast. Apoplast is through the cell walls, and simplast is the intracellular route uh, through the plasmodus matter. The heavy metals take an apoplastic pathway in the xylem, but at the endodermis, they must take a simplastic pathway. This is true because it's blocked the endodermis by the Caspian strip. 1 and 2 are fine. Okay, so the answer should be A, but I'm still checking 3 and 4. The rate of accumulation of heavy metals in the leaf cells will be faster at night. Wrong. Photosynthesis actually increases the transpiration stream. 4. The presence of heavy metals causes transpiration stream to slow down and reduce the rate of transpiration. Uh, there is actually no data based on this, so we can't actually say. Okay? 27 is A. Where is the correct route for the movement of water from cell to cell in the apoplast pathway? Okay, so apoplast is cell wall root. Okay, cell wall root. So basically, it cannot move through the Caspian strip. It does not move through the plasmodus master. It basically. Uh, moves through intercellular spaces. So, I, I, maybe I worded something wrong here, guys. Maybe I said intercellular by mistake uh, over here. I meant intra. I, I, I don't remember what I said. Basically, the heavy metals take an apoplastic pathway in the xylem, but at the endodermis must take a simplest pathway. So, apoplastic pathway is actually the movement through the cell walls. It's between cells, essentially. Between two cells, through the cell walls. Uh, the simplest pathway is through the plasmodus matter. It's an intracellular pathway. This is intra and this is inter. Inter means between cells. Intra means through or within cells. Okay, so intercellular spaces is fine for apoplast. It cannot move through adjacent cell surface membranes. Okay, so uh, more clarification on this over here. Check this, chapter seven. Just uh, check this diagram. Apoplast, water enters cell wall, moves through the cell wall, uh, through the intercellular spaces. Water may directly move from cell wall to cell wall. Water enters the cytoplasm by osmosis by the partially permeable cell surface membrane. It moves into the vacuole by the tonoplast. Water may move from cell to cell through plasmodes matter. Water may move from cell to cell through adjacent cell surface membranes and cell walls. You need to memorize these eight points, okay? Then everything else will fall into place. Understood? Great. Which row shows the correct sequence for the movement of sucrose into phloem sieve tubes? Okay. So mainly, guys, uh, we pump H plus actively from the component cell into the cell wall. Okay. At first, this is the phloem sieve tube. This is the companion cell. This is the cell wall. We pump H plus actively into the cell wall from the companion cell. This is what happens at first. Okay. So active transport of protons out of the not into co transport wrong, diffusion wrong, active transfer of protons into the companion cell wrong. It should be out of. The answer is D. 
clearly. Next, co-transport of protons. I think let's check the next one. What happens next is basically uh, an H plus gradient is built up. It will move it back into the component cell passively through a co-transporter that also carries uh, sucrose with it. Okay, this is a passive process. This is fine. And then sucrose will diffuse from the component cell to the uh, phloem sieve tip through the plasma plus mode. Okay, D is correct. What occurs during ventricular systole in a mammalian heart? Okay, ventricular systole. Basically, if you look at the diagram, wait, wait, let me bring the diagram from variant 1.1. One, one. Mm. Where did it go? Here. So they're saying that aortic pressure increases. Obviously, doing atrial systole. Is it wait? What systole? Ventricular. I mean, aortic. Obviously, aortic pressure will increase because this is when ventricular systole is occurring. So the aortic pressure increases. That's the red line. Okay, the red line. Aortic pressure increases. Then they said that the atrial pressure does not change but look guys the, look at the yellow line the atrial pressure slightly changes okay during ventricular system it does change it doesn't remain stationary so two is actually wrong atrial pressure does change two is wrong ventricular pressure increases obviously look at the blue line ventricular pressure increases by a lot okay so this is right this is right we're gonna go with one and three thirty is b right uh, major vein. I was talking about this in variant one, one as well. So what about the vein, guys? Let's talk about the vein. Essentially, the vein. Basically, what about the lumen? The lumen is actually pretty big for a vein. Check this. The lumen is pretty big. It has a tunica intima. It also has a tunica media, the middle layer. It's very thin, contains some smooth muscle and elastic fibers. It doesn't have collagen, really, unlike arteries. And the outer layer contains mostly collagen. Okay. It is a relatively large lumen. So, which plant diagram represents the tissues in a major vein? So, the endodermis has to be very thin. All of it is like that. And what about the other ones? Look at the plan diagram over here. Basically, it was very thick in the artery over here, right? They were of equal thickness, and the endodermis was very thin. But here, look, you have a very thin inner layer, very thin middle layer, but the outer layer is very thick, okay? That's what you need to uh, pay attention to the outer layer will be very thick as a result 31 the answer is d you have a one cell thick inner layer you have very thin middle layer this outer layer is very thick okay so guys uh, what's the difference between a and d then it's just that a has a much you know, A has a much smaller or narrower lumen, but D has a great lumen. So it was between D and C anyway, because these were the lumens of arteries. I'm going to clarify again. So why D over C? In 31, why D over C? The diagram over here isn't that um, great, actually. We have a large lumen. The middle layer will be very thin, and outer layer is mostly collagen fibers. And we also have an external layer. I'll show you what I mean by that. But let me see if I can get a better photo. This is a bit hard to read. But yeah, okay, so 
mainly by elimination a and b are gone it's between c and d in c and d we only see wait let me show you plan diagram of vein They have the same photo here. Yeah, it's like this basically. This is the plan diagram for vein. The intima is very small. Then we have the media. Mm, wait. I think copy let me zoom into this yeah so we have intim over here then we have media then adventitia basically the main difference over here is check this um the middle layer for artery is is very thick but the middle layer in venules or veins is much less in thickness than the outer layer which contains collagen fibers so was there a plan diagram of the arterial over here let me see, let me check uh, i mean the venule So this seems better, right? The one on the right. I guess this is fine. But here basically I wanted to highlight that in the course book they actually showed us that the outer layer was uh, much thicker. Okay, but it actually varies from vein to vein. This is a specific vein. This is a small vein. Like in larger veins, it does vary. In larger veins, it's like this. You will uh, usually see this diagram, this plan diagram over here, okay? So this is the difference between them. All right. So according to that, you have to go through this because the problem with C was it only had look one and two layer. Where's the, where's the last layer? That's the problem with C. But we know that veins have three layers. So that's that. Okay. You guys don't need any other details. So large lumen and three layers. That's all. 32. The diagram shows the presence, shows the pressure changes in various structures of the left side of the heart during the cardiac cycle. At the end of which period is the ventricle full of blood? Okay. Throw back to this, um, this picture. Check this. Uh, there was another picture. Wait, not bad. There was another picture in variant one one. Here you go. This can give you more details. So honestly, at hundred millisecond over here, the uh, atrial ventricle valve closes and the ventricular contraction just begins at this point. And here the aortic valve opens, so the ventricle is about to empty. That's basically the ventricular ejection, okay, where this one opens afterwards. So they asked us here, where is the ventricle full of blood? Okay, so that's basically during ventricular filling. Okay, during ventricular filling, this portion. So honestly, this is when the atria is atria 
when the atrium or atria are contracting really okay so according to this we know that in b it can be possible because the atrioventricular valve at this point over here the atrioventricular valve opens i mean the uh at this point the av valve closes and here the aortic valve opens so after this point all blood rushes out of the ventricle so the ventricle becomes empty starting from b so just before the ventricle becomes empty at this point the ventricle is full okay because look it's a closed chamber so point a actually refers to this section of this uh, diagram this part basically both are closed so the ventricle is full right after this this is basically after atrial contraction they're full right after this blood exits the ventricle okay hopefully that makes sense so answer a which description of movement of substances during tissue fluid formation is correct low hydrostatic pressure forces substances out of the capillary at the artery end Mm, no, not really. At the artery end, the hydrostatic pressure is higher, so that allows it to exit. So A is wrong. Tissue fluid moves back into the venule due to a net hydrostatic pressure change in the capillary. Movement of water in the tissue fluid into the capillary by osmosis is due to low water potential and low hydrostatic pressure inside the capillary. This is correct. C is better, not B. So it's mainly due to the lower water potential as well as the low hydrostatic pressure inside the capillary. Okay, this is very important for you guys. Basically, in the capillary bed, what happens? In the arterial end, we actually end up losing plasma. Okay, so it is mainly due to the high hydrostatic pressure and the lowest amount of solids in the blood and in the venous end it is mainly due to the high solid concentration that is the low osmolarity to the high solid concentration and the hydrostatic pressure gradient is still pointing outside okay it's always outside it's just that the hydrostatic pressure gradient is much higher at the artery end but the solid concentration gradient is higher at this end okay got it So it's actually not the net hydrostatic pressure that's wrong. It's due to the low hydrostatic pressure and due to the low water potential. This is wrong. It should be a low, it should be high hydrostatic pressure. Which row shows the change in concentration of some substances? RBC when carbon dioxide diffuses from active cells into the RBC. Okay. So carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme. Come on, guys. This was a trick question. There will be no change. So carbonic anhydrase catalyzes this reaction it produces h2co3 okay so h2co3 breaks down to form hco3 minus and forms h plus so bicarbonate ions actually increases that is why i'm gonna go with d this is wrong hydrogen ions also increases okay last six which statements of the human gas exchange system are correct the absence of cartilage in small bronchioles allow them to expand cartilage is pr present only in bronchi and trachea so this looks good this allows uh, them to constrict and expand the walls of the alveoli are made up of squamous epithelium two is wrong two is wrong two is wrong alveoli secret a substance which reduces surface tension surfactant so one and three are correct the trachea and uh, bron uh, bronchi are separated by rings no c trachea is separated by c-shaped rings and bronchi are served by like blocks of cartilage. Four types of cells in the gas exchange system are listed below. Alveolus epithelium cells, slated cell, goblet cell, smooth muscle cell. Okay, so let's see. Which ticks show the specialized features of three types of these cells? Let's see. So one cell is unique. It has a lot of endoplasmic reticulum and many Golgi bodies. So clearly, this type 3, okay, which one is it out of here? That's the determining factor. Clearly goblet cell. 
because it needs it is a secret mucus mucin right that's why it needs golgi body for packing and endoplasmic reticulum for producing the protein that is why i'm gonna go with c that's the way to answer this nothing else all the others are the same more or less why is it difficult to control the spread of tb so tb is mainly spread by droplets okay and honestly tuberculosis is a dormant disease it stays unnoticed for many years global air travel for commerce and tourism has increased okay this actually increases it by the droplet transmission so this is correct the bacterium that causes tuberculosis has evolved resistance this is true the bacterium that causes tuberculosis shows great antigenic variability civil unrest and poverty result in overcrowded living conditions overcrowding it should be one two and four okay why not three though So, antigenic var variability, uh, it's not really a factor, but even if there was antigenic variability, that would cause problems in uh, treatment rather than spread. Spread is the key word. So, here we're looking for methods of spread mainly. Last few ones, rabies is a viral disease which can be spread to humans by bite from an infected animal. One method of treatment is to inject the patient with antibodies specific to the rabies virus. Which statement about this treatment occur? The patient will have natural passive. So it's actually passive immunity, but it's artificial, not natural, because it, it hasn't passed through placenta or breast milk. So one is actually wrong. It's between C and D. 38 is between C and D. The injected antibodies will be broken down by the patient. This is true. Over time, it will. The patient's memory cells will be able to produce this antibody. Wrong. Artificial antibody, uh, artificial protection or immunity does not help in producing memory cells. It will last for a short time. Okay, it is short-lived. So the answer is 2 and 4, 38D. Last two. Okay, for 39, a person's blood group is determined by antigens present on the red blood cells. The table shows the antigens and antibodies in the blood of people with different blood groups. Okay, <clears throat> so we know that. Uh, a, B has no antibodies, O has both antibodies, B has anti-A and A has anti-B antibodies and the other antigens. During a blood transfusion, it is essential that the person who receives the blood does not have antibodies to the donor's blood, okay? So the person who receives the blood does not have antibodies to the donor's blood. Basically, guys, A, B can uh, receive, can receive blood from anyone. O can receive blood from O only. This is very important. Because look, <clears throat> AB, it is important that the person who receives the blood, the recipient, does not have antibodies to the donor's blood. So AB has no antibodies. That's why he or she can receive from anyone. O has both antibodies. That is why he or she can only receive from O. Now let's look at B. B has anti-A antibodies. Okay? B has anti-A antibodies. So, the person with B cannot receive A antigen. That is why they cannot receive the A antigens, which is present in A and AB. So, A and AB are off limits. It has to be D. B and O are clear. B will obviously be clear because a person with B group can receive B from, you know, blood from B group. And O has no antigens, right? So, it's totally safe. So, since O has no antigens on the RBC, uh, <clears throat> so the anti-A antibodies won't react with anyone. There is a counter-argument. You can say that but O has anti-B antibodies, right? Which can react with the B antigen on the B blood group. But thing is, the antibodies in the uh, from the donor become very, you know, dilute in the plasma of the recipient. Okay, That's the reason why you should never look at the antibodies of the donor you only need to look at the antibodies of the recipient okay and the antigens of the donor a student used a diagram to show four types of cells involved in primary immune response cell type 1 release chemicals that stimulate phagocytes to engulf antigens cell type 2 Destroy cells infected with viruses which will be released into the body. Cell type 3. Produce antibodies required to bind to antigen. Plasma cells produce antibodies. Okay. And plasma cells are derived from B lymphocytes. So cell 3 is actually a B lymphocyte. 
Um, cell type 4. Recognize the 4 antigen, move towards it and surround it. So that's clearly macrophage. So we know about this. Now what about cell 1 and 2? Cell 2 destroys the cell. So clearly the name says it all. It needs to be the T killer cell. Sorry, yeah, a T killer cell is cell type 2, my bad. I just marked the wrong one. So it should be C. So this is the T killer cytotoxic T cell. One is the T helper cell, it secretes chemical cytokines. Uh, this is the B lymphocyte, which is derived to form uh, plasma. This is the macrophage, it is involved in engulfing the uh, bacteria. Anyway, guys, so that is it. Uh, if you do like the videos, remember to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to link the playlist for paper 1 up here. The video for May-June 2022, paper 1, 1 up here. And the video for May-June 2022, variant 1-3 down here when I solve it. And if I've made any mistakes in the video, please feel free to comment down below. See you guys.